translation. The beautiful deity said, My dear Brahmana, kindly see that my embryo is not killed by Lord Shiva, the Lord of all living entities, because of the great offense I have committed against him. Purport. Diti was conscious of her offense and was anxious to be excused by Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva has two popular names, Rudra and Ashutosh. He is very prone to anger as well as quickly pacified. Diti knew that because of his being quickly angered, he might spoil the pregnancy she had so unlawfully achieved. But because he was also Ashutosh, she implored her Brahmana husband to help her in pacifying Lord Shiva, for her husband was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. In other words, Lord Shiva might have been angry with Titi because she obliged her husband to transgress the law, but he would not refuse her husband's prayer. Therefore, the application for excuse was submitted through her husband. She prayed to Lord Shiva as follows. Oma Gyana Timirandasya, Gyananjana Salakaya, Chakshumilitamina, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Mukam Karoti Vajalam, Pangung Langaiti Girim, Yat Kripata Mangvante, Shri Gurun Dina Taranam. Shri Chaitanya Manubistam, Stapidam Nina Butale, Swayam Rupa Kadamayam, Tadati Swabanantika. Chai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadada Shiva Sari, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The beautiful deity said, My dear Brahmana, kindly see that my embryo is not killed by Lord Shiva, the Lord of all living entities, because of the great offense I have committed against him. Hare Krishna. So we hear here about the lamentation of deity, who was very anxious in the face of getting a reaction because of her um, misbehavior. Yeah, she induced her husband, even though he warned her, he warned her better not, but she was too attached. Sometimes we are in such situations, we might know it better, but we cannot act upon it. Sometimes it happens. And then if the act is done, then we regret. <laughs> So Diti heard better not to do it. What was what she she wanted to have a child, which is not a problem, but it was in the in this situation inappropriate time. And Kashyapa warned her that it's okay, you can have a child, we can have intercourse, but this time is not suitable for that. So better not. But she was so attached that she could not wait. So she got uh, pregnant, and now after. You know, this is in general, right, the, the lust or anger, all these infatuations, this um, so-called anartas, bad qualities, they force us to act in a certain way. Our intelligence is bewildered and when it's done, kind of, we come back to our normal conscious. Oh, what have I done, right? We are like mm, bewildered by these bad qualities. So, same with her. You know, when everything was done, she came to her senses and, oh, what have I done? And she knew that this might get her into trouble. Not so much maybe her, but she was praying now for her child. So she prayed to the Brahmana, to her husband, please help me. And um, please forgive me. Actually, I deserve a, a, a punishment, but still, <laughs> please help me. And sometimes we are also in such situations, right? When, or in general, we can think how, yeah, we should not reflect too much, but how many sinful th things we have done in our life and that we deserve a reaction, justly, rightly. And we can be very, very grateful that this is taken away by Krishna. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I take it away, I take all these sins away. Oh, we should get many reactions for all that what we have done. I think most of devotees, me included, we kind of take this granted. No, I'm a devotee, now it's okay. But actually, we can be very happy that Krishna yeah, did that. 
So he, we are forgiven, right? We are forgiven. Krishna forgave us. And we should be very grateful for that. So maybe you have had such situations where you knew, oh, some trouble is coming, but somehow it was prevented or someone was forgiven, <coughs> forgiving you. And how, how happy we feel in such situations. As, uh, or another example, what was it? Adi Purusha said, you are driving your car and you're driving too fast and the police is stopping you, you drove really too fast or something and they give you a fine of, I don't know, 500 euros or 1000 euros and they will take away your driving license and the letter is coming and it's really bad and you all oh, know it's so terrible and 5000 euros and this and that and after some weeks there comes another letter and says, oh we made some miscalculation, you owe us only 50 euros. <laughs> You're very very happy. Very happy. Only 50 euros are wonderful. <laughs> so, another situation, you are on the street, you go in the shop, you want to buy something, you had 50 euros in your pocket, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you recognize, oh, my 50 euros are gone, oh, how terrible, my 50 euros are gone. Huh? Same thing, huh? 50 euros taken away, one situation, you're so happy, please take my 50 euros, <laughs> please take it. Another situation, how terrible, yeah? how relative this world is. Anyway, so, I don't know how this fits to that one, but if we are forgiven, if something, you know, it turns around in, in life from terrible to, you know, the, ter the terror is uh, prevented, then we feel re relieved, we feel relieved, yeah, if we are forgiven. Especially if we are forgiven without cause, so to say, yeah? if, if we deserve some punishment and uh, still it is taken away, we should be very, very happy. So, Diti, she is um, praying to, to uh, her husband to help her. Uh, she doesn't want that reaction. But uh, from another point of view, um, it's very good that she did that. Right? It's very good that she did that, because without this, there would not be any Hiranyakashipu. And without Hiranyakashipu, there wouldn't be any Nisingadev. <laughs> okay, you could say Nisingadev was coming out of necessity, you know, he kind of applied himself to the circumstances. So, but still, it's a, a wonderful Leela, what we will hear. And uh, it's one of the, yeah, and it shows us the power of the Lord's, um, uh, or the, the, his mind of being always eager to help the devotee. So we should always turn to Krishna in general for in any circumstances. And... I think every one of us had some experience of this in life that we understood, wow, this was Krishna, he was helping me. In the divine interference, the divine invent intervention, right? I made a video a couple of this, like one week ago I made a video, a live stream, uh, what is God and what he is not. Yeah? And I went into some philosophies uh, and theologies and how are their, uh, how, what is their understanding of God. And there's one is called um, uh, deism. Some of you heard de with, with the D, not ha T, with D, deism, which was I heard also propagated by a philosopher called Spinoza. And this uh, philosophy says something like this: that God created the whole universe, populated the whole universe, and then He left it alone. <laughs> then He left it alone, and since then He has nothing to do with it. So, and they justify, because they say the universe is too, you know, you can see there's some creator behind it, but he is not going to intervene. And in that sense, prayers are of no use. And there, he will never appear in the universe, and uh, this, he will not appear in any way in the universe. Not personally, not as an avatar, not as someone sent, not as scripture. So it's kind of an atheism, theism thing. It's very interesting, right? Yeah, okay, he set up the universe, but since then he doesn't care anymore. I don't know how he justifies that in general. Yeah, it makes it a very, him a very limited God and a very cold God also. But still, somehow or other, this is there. So whereas we have a philosophy of, of panentheism, I had once an interview with Krishna Kshetra Swami and we spoke on similar topics like this, and um, then he said, yeah, our philosophy in technical terms is called a panentheism. 
which is an which is exactly what is our philosophy. It means, because pantheism means everything is God. Pantheism is like kind of a monism. Everything is God. Yeah? Impersonalistic, monistic, you know, equating God with the sum total of all the existence. And all the parts taken together is God. But our philosophy is that there's a different entity, God, out of whom does the world emanate, yeah, it's an emanation, and because of this the world or the emanation is equal to God. The, this is what we say. We say the world is God. Krishna actually identifies himself over and over again with the world. Especially in, yeah, in Bhagavad Gita and also the whole concept of the universal form. The, Purusha, right? The Purusha in the universal form is God as the universe. And it's very graphic, right? The, un the, the elements and the articles of the universe are bodily parts of God. God is, this is complete, it's a very special form of pantheism. Everything is God. But this is just one form of God. It's not the only form of God. The original spiritual form of God, of course Krishna, out of whom everything emanates and because of his being, because of being his emanation, it is also him. The universe is Krishna, but it's not the only form of him. And uh, this is what we believe, yeah? as Prabhupada says in the last verse in the Bhagavad Gita, um, and the purport, that Krishna is everything, but not everything is Krishna. And it sounds like, oh, that's an interesting thing, but actually this is a summary of Achintya Beda Beda Tattva, to some extent. Krishna is everything, but not everything is Krishna. You can think about this for the rest of the day, and we'll come to many interesting conclusions. <laughs> so, um, so, divine intervention. Firstly, Krishna, the universe, as being an emanation of Krishna, and the universe, I heard this in a, in a Bhakta class a couple of days ago, the universe we live in, an, it's called biophilic universe. <laughs> and biophilis universum. Yeah? That means the universe is loving life. Or the universe is geared towards life. Yeah? The, universe, the, 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 the universe is kind of a playground for living entities. The Lebensraum. So the, this cause of the universe or the reason for the universe to exist is that the living entities can have their life. And uh, what is life without consciousness? As we spoke, uh, what would be a living entity which is not aware of his being alive? You, know, you are alive, but you are not aware that you are alive. Yeah. So it sounds weird, but this is like a robot. A robot is alive to some extent. It depends how you define life or what are living symptoms. But he is not really aware as much as they like to simulate that he is aware. Like uh, robot technology is very advanced and it's not just any more artificial intelligence. Now they want to have also artificial consciousness. And, they, and because they think consciousness is mechanistic, also we can duplicate it in a machine. But anyway, it's, re it's ridiculous, of course, from our point of view, it's ridiculous. Consciousness is spiritual, it's a symptom of the soul, and makes us aware of our existence, and this is what it means to be alive, that you're conscious of your beingness, of your individuality, of your yeah, being a living entity. So in that sense, if the universe is geared towards life, and life means a conscious experience, and what is a conscious experience, or who can have a conscious experience? Only a person who has like an I consciousness. I exist as a person, as an individual entity, so it's the universe uh, geared towards the personal experience. So the experience, individual, personal experience, is in that sense the reason for the universe, which is shown through being biophilic, meaning that all the elements in the universe are per working perfectly that life itself is possible. Right? It's a very, very sophisticated mach machine. 
So all that we can see, Krishna is very interested in the universe. It's his, he set it up that we can have the experience out of our antagonism, out of our envy, out of our don't want to submit to Krishna, but still he doesn't care so much in that sense. He said, okay, do your thing. He gave us a free will. He has to live with us uh, misusing it, right? These are the chances. He's not happy about it because Krishna loves everyone and he wants that we are happy and we cannot be happy without him. But still, this is his great love that he says, you can leave me and I will still love you. And I even set up a whole universe for you and do what you like. Of course, reactions might be there, but still, he's doing it out of, of love, actually. Yeah? He's, letting us in, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's showing us the path into darkness out of love. <laughs> But still it's love because we're attached, we just, we want it. And it's, it's not, and Krishna is never uh, taking it personal. This is also so interesting. Krishna is never ever taking it personal, whatever we do out of ignorance and even doing against Him. We can see this in so many instances in Shastra. With Hiranya Kashipu, he was not taking it personal. He was not like, how, how dare he? He was protecting Prahlad, he made a statement, yeah, be nice to the devotees, but it's not that he hated Hiranika Shippu. We, we can see this in so many instances, where Krishna, where Krishna killed a demon, or he, uh, he changed the misbehavior of a demon, he was, we, we all understand that. It's not out of hate, it's just out of sense for justice. And to make an example, and in the end, actually, because, of, because out of love for the demon. Because he knows it's not a demon. It's a soul completely bewildered. And I don't take his bewilderment personal. He can see through that. And I find this amazing. Of course, in one sense, it's not amazing because Krishna is Krishna. Of course, he must be that. But in comparison to us being also persons, how personal do we take things? <laughs> We're like, you know, some more, some less. Yeah? Depends on our advancement. But if you're not very advanced, someone just looks at us a little bit, you know, to our displeasure, and we have a whole drama in our head. It's amazing, you know, nothing really happens, but it's a whole, and it, we take it very personal. <laughs> How could he or she do that to me, right? It's amazing, yeah. So we have to uh, get on Krishna's level. And we can see that in devotees, in advanced devotees, isn't it? This is one of the signs of advanced devotee, that he is humble. He is not expecting honor for himself. In the opposite, he gives all his honor to others. So much so that, that the others, if they are not advanced, think, oh, that's nice, I deserve it. Sometimes when I'm with my spiritual master, I'm shocked how respectful he is towards me. It's, it's, it shocks me, and idiot as I am, I, I believe him. <laughs> I believe him that there's something really respectable in me. Oh, my guru is respecting so much, maybe, maybe he must be right. Yeah, no, it's all this extreme humility that he sees the good in there where is nothing good. This is the amazing quality of a devotee, that he magnifies the good quality. And he takes pleasure in that. Why? Because he's not envious. Because he's not, he can, I think Maharaj spoke a couple of days about this, isn't it? That he can give um, credit to others. A Brahmana can give credit to others. And he's happy doing that. Whereas a miser is, he cannot, cannot praise others. And if he does, it's just you know, out of etiquette. And it's very superficial. But a real devotee, he likes to give credit. He likes to see the good qualities in others. And he likes to magnify that. Yeah? And it's, it's a wonderful quality. Even in someone who does not have so many good qualities. Yeah? We always have this example of the bee and the fly. It's such a nice example. I like it so much. The bee and the fly. Yeah? The bee is attracted to the nectar. She has like a radar. Yeah? And, and, and can fly towards the nectar. You always find the, the, the flowers. Huh? This is what bees do. Yeah? And even in a, a, 
there's a one lonely flower. Imagine one lonely flower, the last days of its having honey and being nectar-like in the middle of a big, like sometimes you see in the movies or in, the movies or in documents, these huge garbage piles, right? And there's like a, and in this huge garbage thing, you know, black sky and smoke and, and it's, it's dirty. And there's one little flower of, of hope. <laughs> It's not useless. The world is not just bleak and dark, you know. There can be something good in the world. So this bee, has a, having this radar, flies everywhere around and knows exactly where it is, mystical powers it has, and finds the flower and dips into it and, you know, makes the best out of the flower's existence, of course. Then we offer it to Krishna, then it's perfect, but still, you know, the, the, the bee knows what to do. Hmm? So, and a fly is the opposite. A fly, there might be a wonderful field of flowers, the most beautiful, colorful, fragrant flowers, and there's one poo <laughs> from whatever living in this you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, fresh. And uh, the fly will exactly find that and will take pleasure there. So this is the fly and the bee principle, and the fly and the bee consciousness. And the devotee has a bee consciousness. There might be a person, he's like this pile of garbage. He's just dark and dirty <laughs> and smelly. But there might be one good quality, and the devotee will find it like the bee and will magnify it. It's not that the devotee is naive, right? Doesn't see the other things, but he can enhance someone. And he can change some, like Narada Muni changed the hunter, the, what was his name, Mrigari. Yeah, everyone knows the story of Mrigari, the hunter. Uh, what does Mrigari mean? He means the enemy of the animals. Uh, Ari means the uh, enemy and Mriga is in the animals. He, this is what his, was, was his name, enemy of animals. And this is what he did. He was hunting animals. But he was not only hunting them, he was shooting them in a way that they die a painful, long death. And he was taking pleasure. Quite some person. And Narada Muni was not shocked by him. Oh, I'm a saint, what a terrible person, I have to go away, Vishnu, 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 don't, you know, don't, don't, don't uh, uh, make me dirty with your consciousness, so oh, terrible, terrible. No, he becomes so merciful, and he somehow rather saw there is a chance, there is a chance of uh, converting him. And of course, Narada Muni is a, very, is a very convincing person, right? He can convince someone of the holy name what he did. So, but this is uh, what a devotee can do. He is not bewildered. If a pure devotee would, you know, be so, you know, sattvic in that way that he would never associate with the opposite, Prabhupada would have, he would have come on the Chaladuta to America, he write the poem, and you know, with this, everyone is here fully in Rajas and Tamas, and how will I be able, and he sees, my God, what they are doing, he takes the next ship, goes back, very quickly, you know, this is not befitting a sadhu. <coughs> Prabhupada was, this was extreme, for us it's normal, right, if I visit my mother, and the fridge is full of meat, and all that, and yeah, what to do, right? But Prabhupada, being such a person, he, you know, he, and that he didn't take it personal. He was insulted by the hippies sometimes. He did not take it personal. Sometimes we hear in the Lilamrita, they, they were insulting you, they were criticizing him, they were, you know, uh, fighting against him all, all, the, all the time, actually. He was never taking person, never. Oh, now, now jetzt bin ich aber beleidigt. Jetzt bin ich, nein, 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 that, that, that was too much. Now I'm, what is beleidigt in English? Now I'm, huh? Oh yeah, I'm offended. But in German it sounds so nice. I'm beleidigt. <laughs> bin, bin, bin ich beleidigt. <laughs> yeah, offended. Oh, now you offended me terribly. No, no, I will not preach anymore. I, will, I don't tell you anything about Krishna. You offended me. Right? So, very interesting. So, why? Because Krishna is not like that. Because Krishna is r truly merciful, loving, and so we can expect his forgiveness. 
he, uh, he, he promises forgiveness when we surrender to him. And Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya was Patita Pavana, Nityananda, saving uh, Chaga and Madre. Why all that? Because actually Lord Chaitanya is Krishna in the mood of Radharani. Actually there is where, where it's coming from, from Radharani. Radharani is the most soft-hearted entity and uh, we should take her mercy and her shelter too. Actually it's Radharani's movement. It's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. But Ra Mah Mahaprabhu thinks like Radharani. It's her mood. Yeah. So this is then uh, our preaching. And I think this will be so beautiful if we as devotees learn this art of Krishna consciousness and get our hearts changed and out of this change and realization and pleasure we preach. This was, I, 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 I don't know, but I would say this was one of Prabhupada's effects and why he was so successful because of course being a pure devotee and having such a mood he touched uh, people's hearts so much. And yeah, it will take a long time. I, I'm trying also to preach, right? We call it preach and communicate, speak about Krishna. And I don't know why it's sometimes effective. I think it's only because I try to be as authentic as I can to present Prabhupada's knowledge and present Prabhupada. I, I wouldn't say it's me converting people. They think, wow, this Ananda Krishna is very wonderful devotee. And, no, it's just the beauty of the knowledge in the Bhagavatam. But one day we might be really so advanced that we touch people's hearts and that we are examples of the Bhagavatam. They say, wow, you are such a nice person. Where you got this from? Oh, from the Bhagavatam. Let me read it too. Huh? We should be living Bhagavatams. We should be living Bhagavatams. As Prabhupada was. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was. And this will change the, the world. We, should, we are meant to change the world to some degree. You know, it's not that... I will change the world now. Let me go. Uh, a couple of days I had this you know, idea. Why am I not powerful enough? And I can go to the mayor of Jan Lusbrun. <laughs> make him a devotee. And the whole Jan Lusbrun will follow. And then I will go to Munich and make... Who is, what's his name? Söder. I change his heart too. Herr Söder, please listen. Let's have a talk. And he's, wow, you're so right. <laughs> you're so right. Oh, really, it's true. I will, yeah, become devotee. And we, yes, and then I will go to Berlin. <laughs> I will go to Berlin and I will speak to the lady <laughs> yeah, with unspeakable name. I will speak to her. <laughs> and I will talk with her and she will be touched and will be happy. And she remember, yes, I remember. I got a book many years ago by a Sanginan devotee whose name is Sabuch. And I still have it in my bookshelf. Now we'll read it. Let's read it together. <laughs> and uh, we will be so happy. Yeah, we will be such wonderful friends. And she will tell to all the ministers in whole Germany, we have a new plan. We have a new plan for Germany. Yeah, it's called Bhagavad Gita. Yes. And then we go to the EU together, hand in hand with Merkel and Söder. <laughs> and we go there. <laughs> and go to the EU parliament. And on and on it goes. So I think, why not Krishna? <laughs> but okay, maybe not me, but let someone do it. <laughs> maybe one day there will be some powerful devotee like that. All right? Who knows what will come? Who knows how it will happen? But yeah, why are we are not powerful enough to change people's hearts? So let's yeah, work on that, pray for that, become selfless, to not only care about our personal spiritual life, so, but, but the others. And I'm trying my best, but I have such a... Uh, how much am I really interested? It's amazing. Yeah? We try to preach and distribute books, and, but how much do we, are you really interested? Huh? It always is possible to have more mercy, which anyway we don't have. I heard always from Vijay Prabhu, three reasons, actually four, why we distribute books, but in general, why we preach. Or, motive, or let's say modes, huh? in Tamaguna, Rajaguna and so on. Tamaguna book distribution or preaching out of complete frustration. Uh, and you ha you, you're doing it 
and you're frustrated. And I did it. I did book distribution in Tamaguna, where I did not like the people. I was angry. I was, I don't know why I kept on actually. Because just because to, I, I don't know, uh, complete craziness. Huh? But I didn't like anyone and I, I wished them terrible things. <laughs> and so uh, I was praying, where is the atom bomb coming? <laughs> this place doesn't deserve to exist. <laughs> and if the atom bomb is not coming, I make austerities, so become a huge demon. <laughs> Like Rita Zura and I will trample the whole city, <laughs> become a Godzilla, uh, yeah, kind of like that, you know, this is a <laughs> Tamaguna. Huh? Then Rajaguna book distribution, you're so much attached to the result, you want to have more book points and you have a better place and this is why you do it. And preaching might be the, the reason, yes, let's preach to have more followers, more on our list, to have more bigger temple, to prove maybe our ego, and have more Lakshmi, things like this, attached to a result. Like preaching is a via media to ego gratification. Can be there for sure, right? Take it as a sport or something. And then preaching a book distribution in Sattva Guna. You do it out of duty and selfless. You do it because it must be done, it's the desire of Prabhupada and it's pleasing Prabhupada and it's a very nice stage of preaching, it's very nice, but it's still not transcendental. And Vijay Prabhu said at the times, transcendental preaching means out of mercy. And when he uh, spoke about that, I realized what a high platform mercy is and how little mercy do I have. Mercy means really to care about the people. And to, in Germany of this word, no? Mitgefühl or Mitleid. And the beauty of is like that. He really cares. And why? Because Krishna cares. And I don't care. So, which doesn't mean that we have to stay like that. We, can, we should work on this uh, mercy tendency. And out of this, it's very easy also to forgive. And... One last point, a practical point for all of us, I was thinking about that, um, that we have many attachments which keep us in the material world and we have also these personal attachments with other people out of bad attachments, I would say, and we keep, in English it said, keep a grudge. You know, everyone knows what it means? Keep a grudge. We're still offended that he or she did this to me and very often these problems are family-based. And we are attached to being, uh, um, to being uh, angry with them and not forgiving, even though it's an old thing and we pretend it's okay, but still we keep a grudge and we have to let go. We have to learn to forgive. As Krishna forgives, as the devotee forgives, we have to learn to forgive even unrightly, even though not justified, even though having thousands of reasons to be, still be angry and be offended because it was not right. And this is very difficult because you're convinced it is right that I'm angry. It's my right to be angry. And it's my right to think bad about the person. But forgiveness is exactly that. Krishna has millions of reasons not to forgive. Why should he forgive? Maybe we are not such bad people, okay? But there are people out there like Chaga and Madai. Why should you forgive this? They deserve, they deserve hell. We also, we did sometimes things, maybe just the cows we ate. <coughs> this is already a reason for getting serious reactions. What if, and other things what we did. Some might have, have abortions or were stealing or lying or real criminals killing sometimes. There were devotees who killed some others. I heard one, who was it? One devotee was in a Bhakti Shastri course a couple of years ago and was together with, was actually an Af, uh, African devotee. And they get to know each a little bit better and it came out that he killed his wife because she betrayed him, betrayed him with, with his friend or something and he was in prison or something. He killed his wife. So, but now he's a devotee, right? So we should see it also like that. Maybe, you know, respect from the distance or uh, what? Huh? Or no, he is devotee, he changed. We should have the faith that he changed. So, we did some terrible things. And Krishna, why should he forgive? Krishna said, there's karma, you get your reaction, then you're purified. 
you go to hell a bit, you will get killed, you will get eaten, you will get slaughtered, cut into pieces, as you did. So what's the problem? Said, Please, Krishna, no! And he says, yeah, well, so he forgives, because he doesn't take him personal. When you surrender, he can absolve it. And uh, we should do that too, with our nitty-gritty little grudges, because someone looked at us, or someone tr treated us like this or that. And sometimes there might be deeper things, family things, this relationship things. But as long as we have that, I know this in my family, there's a situation where someone, he can not forgive. Impossible. He kind of hates this other person. He doesn't want to, and he doesn't want to leave it and let it go. Right? Completely attached to his being, hating that person. And he is suffering so much. <laughs> he thinks it's my right and it should be like that. I have to feel like that towards that person. But this is so much uh, uh, hurting himself. So this is where I saw we have to let go all of that stuff. It hurts us, it hurts the relationship, it drags us down and it keeps us in the, in the material world. We'll have to come back in a certain family situation to live it out. Yeah, it's like that, until we let it go. So we should take example of Krishna and the pure devotee. Not take it personal, let it go. We are forgiven and we should forgive in the same way. And this will liberate us. This is one of the aspects of our getting purified, liberated and free. Yeah. Thank you so much for your kind attention to this. I think it's a relevant topic because sometimes I experience devotees who have so many issues with these things, right? Yeah. And not necessary. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Any questions or some comments in this regard? Ich habe eine Frage, ich würde die gerne noch zu euch stellen. Und zwar, ähm, ja, ist unsere Bewegung ja eine Bewegung von, sozusagen, also wie Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gesagt hat, dass freigebig das Wissen verteilen, also an jeden sozusagen, du hast die für sein, keinen Unterschied nach oder so. Aber gerade wenn man am Anfang ist und sozusagen noch nicht sehr erfahren im Krishna-Bewusstsein ist, wie sozusagen damit umgehen, weil es gibt verschiedene Personen, die einen beeinflussen oder die einen sozusagen, oder du dann spürst, dass es auch Einfluss auf dich hat. So the question is, how do we deal with influences of other people to whom we want to give Krishna consciousness and how we should do that? Yeah, we have certain capacity of preaching and we should be very intelligent to understand what can I do and what can I not do. So it also depends what is your preaching style or method, like on book distribution, yeah, this is for everyone, for the beginning, it's a nice way to learn, to communicate about Krishna, and you do this with a Sanketan leader who takes you at the hand more or less and protects you and looks at you and you listen to him, you learn from him. And um, you should then on book distribution also understand whom can you approach and whom not. Yeah, Maybe if it's a nice summer day and the ladies walk around uh, dressed very casually and, uh, how to say, not so, don't wear so much, that uh, not to approach them, what to do. Uh, or you, or there's some gang of some, you know, aggressively looking people, you think, Ma, these are the best recipients for the mercy. <laughs> and I will preach to them. Yeah, you might get one on your head. Right, so you have to see what is your capacity. Before that, devotees were very powerful. Huh? They went into bars, sometimes at night, or they went even into a uh, 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 bord bordel, brothel, and sold, actually they sold, and I think paintings, the money that I explained about that, yeah? he, they went in, and they were selling to the prostitutes like anything. They were real, they liked it, but pff, I think it's not so easy, <laughs> out of many reasons. Yeah? So of course, intelligence, see what you can do, and also with family, like when you come to this, because this is sometimes an issue. I go back to my family now for the weekend, how should I deal with this and that? I think we should, we should, as devotees, as Prabhupada said, we should be the best husbands, the best sons, the best brothers and sisters, and we are not there to mission, uh, make a, how to say, to, 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 to convert now the whole family and all that. 
you should be the best you can for your family because this is what they understand and this is what preaches way more than explaining to them the whole Bhagavad Gita. Right? So you be a wonderful son and take care of them lovingly, nicely from a human point of view, from a sattvic point of view and this is uh, very nice. Right? So I know one devotee, he, was, he joined the ashram, he was not home years, I think. He was not visiting family years and then first time, Christmas after five years, uh, someone knocks on the door of the family and there he is in saffron, freshly shaved, tea luck, you know, they were, what? <laughs> and then on Christmas evening, he sat them on the couch, showed them Prabhupada movies and everything. You know. <laughs> I don't know how they took it, maybe they loved it, liked it, but still, you know. <laughs> Conceive, of course, preaching. <laughs> yeah, we should be intelligent and we should know our capacity. And you should learn this from those, especially individual situations, who went through that and know about that. And to be, be prepared, right? If especially if it's some certain circum situation. Like this? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. We wish us all a wonderful Sunday in Krishna Consciousness. Nitai Gaurav Ramanande.